Okay, so this mini lecture is on motion diagrams. So in your book, you have been reading about how to describe motion pictorially in a way that looks like what's called a, a point particle or a motion diagram or a strobe diagram. They go by a bunch of different names. But essentially, what a motion diagram does is it takes a particle and it says, okay, I'm going to look at the position of that particle at very specific points in time where those times are evenly spaced. As if I had a strobe light and I turn the light on and the object, I could see the object mark its position, then I turn the light off, it might move, I turn the light back on, now where is that new object? We're going to worry about, or where is the new location of the object? We're going to worry about motion diagrams really in just a single dimension, a single line. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what a motion diagram might look like for different types of motion. So the first type of motion is, what would a motion diagram look like for an object that's stationary? Okay, so if we imagine turning on the strobe light when the object is at a location in space, and then we turn it off, and then we turn it back on, well, the object hasn't moved, so it'll appear at that same location in space. Then we turn it off, then we turn it back on, the object hasn't moved. So a stationary object is simply going to be a single dot in the same location. Pretty straightforward. All right, so what about an object that is moving? And let's say it's moving at a constant rate. So it's moving the same distance for every flash of the light. So I turn the light on and the object's at a certain location. I turn the light off and it moves. Turn the light back on, the object is now moved. And let's say the object's moving to the right. So it's now in a new location. So in this time from dot to dot is when the object was in the dark, when I couldn't see where it was. And I turn the light back on and now my object's in a new location. Then I turn the light back off and it's off for the same amount of time. And if the object is moving at a steady rate, it's gonna cover that same distance in the dark. So it turns back on, the object's in a new location. Turn the light back off, off for the same amount of time. The object moves that same distance because it's at a constant rate. I turn the light back on. So the object is moving at a steady rate. Our dots are evenly spaced. Now it's important to know where the first sort of time point was and oftentimes that first dot will be marked with a zero representing the initial time of the light turning off. We won't label those dots in class but if you labeled each dot for each time the light went on and then went off, we would see that as time goes on, the object has moved to the right. The spacings are even. It covers the same distance during the dark. Okay, well, what if an object is speeding up? So, now, if an object is speeding up, what do we know? It's getting faster and faster. And if it gets faster and faster, it's going to be covering more distance in the same amount of time. So we turn the light on, the object's at some location. And again, although we won't do this regularly in class, we'll do it for the introduction portion, that's time point zero, the start of what we're interested in. We turn the light off, object's going a certain amount of movement during that light off. Turn the light back on, and sure enough, we see that the object has moved a little bit. Turn the light back off. Now the object is speeding up, so it's going to move a little bit more during the dark because it's going faster. And so we turn the light back on and the amount of movement becomes a little wider. We've gone this far, now we've gone this far. Turn the light back off for the same amount of time. The object keeps getting faster and faster. Now it's moved even further while the dark was happening. Turn the light back off, now it's moved even further. So we can see when we look at our motion diagram that as these dots get further and further apart, the object's moving further when the lights are off. It's speeding up. All right, so what about slowing down? Well, I already used green. Let's use orange. When an object is slowing down, that means it's getting slower and slower and slower. It's not going to get as far in the dark. So we turn the light on. We see where the object is located. This is our time point zero, and I won't label it this time. Turn the light off, it moves. Turn the light back on, it's gotten a certain distance away. Turn the light back off, 
it's slowing down in the dark. And so it's not getting as far the second time. So in the first darkness period, it covered that much distance, but if it's slowing down, it's not going to cover as much. So those dots get closer together. Turn the light off. Turn the light back on. Same amount of time. It's even closer. So as an object is slowing down, covers less and less distance in the dark, our dots become closer together. So there's some examples of motion diagrams, and we could add motions together. What if an object was stationary for a certain amount of time, then started speeding up, then moved at a constant rate, then started slowing down? We can get a general idea of how motion looks by looking at how those dots would look as the lights turn on and off. Good job.